the video series of SharePoint quick questions and answers. In this whole video series, we will try to understand SharePoint in questions and answer format. So let's take up the first question which every newcomer asks. What is SharePoint, WSS and MOSS? So in order to understand SharePoint, WSS and MOSS, we'll take up a typical company and we'll first understand how that company works, how its people work, how its data circulated across organization and then we will see the importance of SharePoint. So here is the company. Now when we talk about organization or a company, we have people like CEO, accountant or we have like sales manager or probably customers and they have their own data means for instance the CEO must be having its management data files stored in Excel, Word, PowerPoint. Accountant must be having its balance sheets or accounting uh, balance sheets, trial balances or data entries, daily transactions stored in Excel files etc. Now we have talked about people, we have talked about data. Now look at now let's look at that how they actually exchange this data. Right. So let's say the CEO says, okay, give me this year's trial balance or account or balance sheet or today's transaction, accounting transaction. An accountant basically says, okay, I have shared a drive. You can take up the Excel sheet or whatever file or data file from the shared drive. Let's say that the sales manager says, okay, what's the strategy for the sales this year? Right. And the CEO can send an email. In the same way, when the company is interacting with the external world or I'll say its customers who are lying outside its organization boundary, probably they are using intranet for sharing information. So, one is that, you know, one is we talked about the data and one is we talk about the data transmission or the protocol by which they exchange data. Now, what is the, now what is the whole issue or whole, whole uh, or what is the, uh, main problem with this kind of communication. First problem that the files or the accounting data files or management data files or the data files are lying in their own personal PC. So tomorrow, if suppose that you know you the PC gets knocked off, right? Then and you are not taken a backup, then you lose all this data. That's the first problem. The second problem is that if tomorrow uh, the accountant or the CEO is not there, then to get these data files. You know, definitely there is an issue because you have to log in in his PC, take his user ID password, etc. So, in other words, you know, uh, there is a personal dependency or I'll say there is a dependency on an individual. Only he knows where the data files are. Right. Second, uh, the sorry, third point is that, you know, everybody is using its own protocol transmission or own way of or the own protocol which he is comfortable with. For example, the accountant is comfortable comfortable with uh, sending data using a shared drive. CEO is comfortable with the email. The customer is comfortable with the intranet. So you can say the way the data is transferred is again non-standardized. So we can say the first point is that the data is decentralized. So let's let's jot on what are the points in these kind of uh, these kind of communication. First, there is non-standardization, right? Second. The, the protocol is again non-standardized, so non-standardized data, right? Second, there is non-standardized protocol by which the data is sent, okay? And due to this non-standardization, the collaboration between the entities becomes complex. In the sense, when a CEO wants to collaborate with his customers, he has to think that, okay, I need to upload on an intranet. When the CEO wants to talk with the accountant, he is comfortable with sharing of a drive. When the CEO wants to contact uh, means he wants to coordinate with the sales manager. He he has to send an email. So in other words, that you know the the in the the collaboration between the entities uh, have become complex, and with that comes down your productivity of your organization. So how can we how can we uh, uh, how can we change our working so that we can increase collaboration? And the answer to this is centralization. If we can centralize all the data into a single server for example now i'm showing a, i'm showing a different scenario or a different outlook of the company the same company which worked in a decentralized manner now here what i'm doing is that i am centralizing i've started centralizing the data on a server so i've centralized the data and everybody just connects to the server or connects to the intranet or to the 
website you know where the data is stored and can share its can share its file can download uh, files sent by the other entities you can say that if we can come up with a centralized enterprise information portal we can increase collaboration between our team members right and sharepoint does exactly that as the name says there is a this is a point where everybody comes and shares so that's why the name is like sharepoint so in other words sharepoint helps us to centralize the data first thing it standardizes our transmission protocol because now everybody is communicating through intranet or http i'll say rather you know that means they are all communicating through the enterprise portal the third point the data formats also standard in other words if you remember the previous scenario it's possible that the account the the accountant sends the balance sheet in excel format and uh, the ceo replies in a word format it's very much possible but over here because they are uploading on a central server the an upload mechanism is controlled through the sharepoint even the templates i will say or the data file formats are also standard so we have achieved three things by centralization first there is uh, uh there is no decentralization of data so everything the backup etc is now happening on the server and everything is centralized right second non standard protocols are removed now we all are communicating through intranet portal third the data templates or the data formats are standardized so you can say that by centralization we all Uh, achieve good collaboration right so now let's uh, now that we have understood that okay we can centralize using sharepoint server let's go to the next session where we will try to understand wss and moss okay now let's understand the two important uh, fundamentals wss and moss wss stands for windows sharepoint services and uh, moss stands for microsoft office sharepoint server right now wss is the api or i'll say rather that it's your it's a core platform of sharepoint and on that platform basically moss is built so wss is the framework on which moss is built now wss is basically free and it comes with a license 2003 server so if you buy 2003 server uh, you will get wss free right uh, while moss is a separate product by itself so what microsoft has done is basically it has said okay you can use the core framework free it it comes as it comes as a as a package with windows 2003 server but in case you need but but we have provided some additional functionalities means microsoft has provided some additional functionality functionalities on the top of wss and named it as moss in case you want this reusable additional functionalities then you need to buy a separate product by itself which is which is uh, which is which will cost you something right so moss is a separate product and it needs licensing so that's that's a basic big difference between wss and sharepoint wss is basically free if you have bought windows 2003 server you can install it and you can use it right while moss is a licensed version because of the additional functionalities you get on top of wss so how do you make a choice between wss and moss first thing budget in case if your uh, customer of, of if your requirement uh, specifies somewhere saying that okay uh, the budget is this much and the budget is they don't want to budget out for uh, uh, they don't do, they don't want to budget out for special moss then definitely you need to use wss here the development time will increase in case you